Well, my brothers and sisters, as I said at the beginning of Mass, we've begun Advent. The liturgical colors have changed. The Advent wreath has appeared, and we'll be blessing it here in a few moments. And we begin that season of preparation, that, that preparation for Christmas. Christmas is not here yet. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Christmas is yet to come. And we don't celebrate Christmas until Christmas Eve. And so we enter, though, into Advent. And just as, as we wear the, the color of purple for Lent, which is a season of, of penance and preparation for the joy and celebration of Easter, so too we do the same for Advent. And we can look at the, the church and why she does this, this wisdom that's there. Two of the, the greatest celebrations of the liturgical year and two of the great mysteries that are a part of the core of our faith, the incarnation and the death and resurrection of Christ. Christmas celebrates that, that incarnation. And as we're diving into Advent, it's good to remember where we're at in some of these liturgical ways. So I'm going to take you back to March 25th, 2022, the celebration of the Feast of the Annunciation, where Christ's coming was announced to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the infant was conceived in her womb by the Holy Spirit. March 25th is exactly nine months from December 25th. 39 weeks and two days, I believe, from what my research told me. Exactly that time period when we would understand that the Blessed Mother would be pregnant with Christ, with Jesus. And yet, that celebration of the birth, the nativity of Christ in Christmas, is that great moment of He's present, He's here among us, and not only in the womb of the Blessed Mother anymore, but here and living and breathing in a different way. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. It truly is a celebration of the Incarnation, even though really that celebration of the Incarnation began nine months ago, on March 25th. And yet there is a hidden aspect of that that then comes into visible view with that celebration of Christmas. And yet, we have to prepare ourselves, and do prepare ourselves every single year for that celebration, that reminder of our God came into the world, took on flesh in order to teach us, reveal who God fully was to us, reveal the great love of God for us in a new way, and then die and suffer for us, only to rise again on the third day. That is what we celebrate in a nutshell every single year. Now, if we dive into this too, so the word Advent itself, ad ventus, ad in Latin, to, and ventus, arrive or come, to come. This celebration of what is to come. Now, the birth of Christ, the nativity of Christ has already happened. And yet we celebrate it again because we need to. We need to remind ourselves of these things. Just as we, we celebrate our own birth year after year after year, so we do the same with our Lord. And yet also there's a second part of this as well. The first coming of Christ and all the great works that we celebrate and believe in our faith. But also that aspect of to come that is the second coming of Christ. And that's where we start today. That's where we dive into Advent with this first Sunday of the four Sundays of Advent. We dive into a reflection upon the fact that the Lord will come again. Remembering that the Lord came once, but then also preparing ourselves for that which is in the future. And that's why when we look at our readings today, we might think to ourselves, well, it's not really pointing towards, towards Christmas, something in the past though it does, it points more toward that event of the future. That event that we pray, that we long for. Because all the aspects of our lives, the fallenness of our humanity and of our world, 
will come to an end when that happens. So, then as we dive into this, why do we dive into it in this way? I want to point out our second reading here from the Romans. They're good reminders for us as we enter into this season of Advent. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. Now sometimes, though, not really, I think we run around a little bit more during the summer months and, and the fall months and things. It's time for us to wake up from sleep. Not the sleep of, of sleeping in our beds or something, but awake from that, that kind of slumber in the spiritual life that can come over us. That slumber of forgetting the realities of the Incarnation of the resurrection of Christ. And what that means for us that we have to live our lives in a certain way. We're called to live our lives, not as St. Paul says, uh, of, of drunkenness, promiscuity, lust, all those things, rivalry, jealousy. These are, are just a few things that really represent the wider reality of all the sinfulness and all the, the stuff that we can terribly do to each other and to our world. We're being called to awake from this, to arise from the darkness of sin, to put on the armor of light that has been won for us by the victory of our Lord, and to truly live as we are called to live. That is what every season, every day, every moment of that the penance of, of preparation is about for us. And it's a calling us to live our lives as we should. And the reality is that we often forget. We often fall back. How often do we say, I'm going to do good today, and then walk out the front door and realize that we did something bad? We're called to, to set aside those things that are, are evil, those things that turn us away from the Lord and truly reorient ourselves looking to Him. And we can reflect then upon what that means for us to, to look towards Him again, to look for His coming into our hearts in a new way today and every moment of this Advent and every moment from here on out. If we look for His coming in a new way, if we allow the, the joy of Christmas, the joy of the birth of our Lord, and the preparation for that to be at work within us, we're going to be transformed in a great way. Now, we're beginning those preparations for Christmas. I'm sure some of us have already started it. We're beginning to, to figure out the tree and the ornaments, the lights and everything along those lines. And, and in times past, those preparations, because of the nature of them, would have begun months ago. And in some cases, they have and do still today. Some have their Christmas presents all bought already, maybe even wrapped. But the reality is that preparation goes on. And now we enter into this season which is spiritual preparation for that celebration. Now, as we dive into this in, in a greater way, I want to reflect upon the Advent wreath. So there's many symbols that, that we have of Christmas, that we have of this preparation for it. We're pulling out the Christmas trees. Maybe we won't decorate them until right before we celebrate Christmas. And we pull out the Advent wreath and the four candles, the four Sundays of Advent, those Sundays of preparation, those weeks of, of getting ready for them. And this week, we're going to bless and light that first candle of the Advent wreath. And in tradition, this, this first candle, this first Sunday, represents the prophets looking to what was prophesied, what they spoke because God prompted them to, spoke to, the, to speak to the people of Israel to get ready for the coming of the Lord both the first coming and the second coming. So we have to dive into this season in a new way. We have to ask the Lord to inspire in us to come in a new way, to make Himself incarnate in our lives. 
that He may come into our lives and transform us. And what does that mean for us then? We're called to give ourselves over to the Lord. We're called to do a little bit of self-mortification in some ways. And I'm not talking about big things. You know, sometimes uh, when we celebrate the season of Lent, we always, I'm going to give up this huge thing. Yes, that's good. But maybe during this season, and it tends to come about a little bit better too, I think, during the Christmas season, the Christmas spirit comes about. That smile to someone who is looking terribly down today. That giving of a kind word to a person who, who hasn't heard any lately. That sharing of a moment of listening to someone who really, really needs to be heard. That looking to the needs of others in a new way. My brothers and sisters, pay attention to the small things as we begin this season. Look for the Lord and His prompting in your hearts. And those small ways that we can make Him present in our lives and the lives of those around us. That's where the transformation begins that I'm talking about. That's where the celebration of this season and allowing ourselves to prepare for that celebration of the remembrance of the birth of our Lord is going to come about.